from our studios in the heart of Silicon Valley, Palo Alto, California. This is a CUBE Conversation. Hi, I'm Peter Burris, and welcome to another CUBE Conversation from our Palo Alto studios. Now, as we do with all CUBE Conversations, we want to have a great conversation about an interesting topic with a thought leader in the industry, and that's exactly what we're doing today. The topic we're going to breach is, why is it that networking remains so expensive? If we go back over the past 20 years of computing, we've seen dramatic price performance improvements in virtually every single sector of infrastructure. But networking persists as a relatively expensive technology arena, despite the fact that we're moving into an era that is going to become increasingly depending upon networks. And to better understand both what the nature of the problem is and how we're going to move forward with a solution, we've got Dominic Wild with us today. Dominic is the CEO of SnapRoute, uh, Dominic, welcome back to theCUBE. Thank you, it's great to be here. So tell us, let's start. Tell us a little bit about SnapRoute. Tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about yourself and SnapRoute and then we'll get into it. Sure, sure. So uh, SnapRoute is delivering uh, basically a, a sort of new, new paradigm in, in network operating systems. Um, we're delivering a, a cloud native network operating system that's designed from the ground up to integrate in this, into this new world of cloud. Uh, architecturally, it's a, a, a fully containerized microservices architecture from the ground up. Um, and what that does is it enables uh, an operator to deliver faster time to service for applications, um, to always be secure and up to date with um, so, you know, security compliance, uh, and also to drive significant um, operational efficiencies as well. So um, we, you know, we believe in that we have a, a really strong value proposition for the industry here, particularly in the in the you know the age of cloud. Um, but we're also marrying to that uh, architectural innovation some economic innovation as well, and economic disruption. And you know we believe that the time is really right here. For, for networking to step up its game effectively. All right, let, let's talk a bit about that, because mm -hmm. if, if I'm a CIO, yeah. uh, every year, uh, for a variety of reasons, every year the business comes to me and says, okay, you got to give me back 10%, right. but we want you to do more. Yeah. And Moore's Law and other uh, physical features of how computing works yeah. has been very kind to me. Right. Uh, I've been able to provide some of that back because I was able to get cheaper servers. And then right. open source allowed me to get cheaper operators operating systems, mm -hmm. and, and even applications got cheaper, and then SaaS comes along and the cloud comes along. Right. Networking's the holdout. Why has networking been the holdout? Yeah, well simply stated, I think it's because networking has not embraced or driven software economics, whereas compute has in, in you know, many different aspects. Um, if, you, if you look at the, the sort of timeline of what's happened in recent history in compute, um, and sort of parallel that with networking, um, compute got Linux. Um, and you know that gave uh, an architectural innovation. It, it gave greater control and the opportunity for operators to innovate on their own. But it also drove this big economic disruption. You know the prices really came down. Then came virtualization. Of course, there was the you know the opportunity there to drive down the you know the prices again because I, I don't need five servers. I only need one. Um, and you know an, another great innovation in terms of you know operator uh, control. Um, and here we are now in the age of containers and cloud native, and and you know get much greater sort of performance benefits of going you know containers on on bare metal. Um, and so you know all of these things have happened where you have an architectural innovation married together with an economic in innovation at the that, software level. At the software level, and and this has not happened in networking because in networking we've continued to really treat the network as an appliance. It's it's proprietary integrated, packaged, um, you know, switches, routers, et cetera. And, um, and, and quite frankly, you know, we got Linux. We got Linux in networking, but the prices went up um, because you know, there was, you know, APIs were introduced and programmability and there's much greater value there, so therefore we'll charge more. Um, and then virtualization came along and, and SDN, the SDN movement, and, and there was great hope, I think, in, in the industry that you know, this would drive a real sort of economic revolution in networking. But what happened was that rather than really addressing the actual network itself and the and the, the software issues with the network itself that make it brittle um, and and very difficult to to manage. Um, we got overlays. 
and we added overlays over the top and abstracted the underlying network and, and added more layers of complexity and expense. And then, you know, here we are in the container age and, and you know, one of the things that we've, we've done here at SnapRoute is we've said, look, you know, let's, let's embrace containers fundamentally and, and let's build an operating system using that technology with DevOps principles to deliver an architecture that lends itself to the task at hand, which is the move to cloud. Um, and how can we, you know, how can we en enable organizations to move quickly to cloud? And let's face it, you know, uh, cloud is is a distributed architecture, and and so, Very you know, by, so. by building uh, a network operating system with an architecture that is essentially a distributed architecture, it, it gives us some advantages. But let's marry together that, you know, let let's let's put the economics, software economics, in there as well, and and quite frankly. You know, we we tried this around about the time of virtualization. The the sort of white box networking movement happened, and and again, there was great hope that hey, this means I can get cheaper networking. But but explain that why yeah. white box? You mean effectively you're able to get commodity hardware, yeah. and in the hope that you could just drop your s network operating system software on top of it and replace these you know, these full stack switches and these full That's stack right. riders that were supporting, you know, 50, 60% margins. That's right, exactly right. And, you know, and I can go direct to an ODM, I can buy the hardware at, a, you know, at, at the same, you know, if I buy the volumes at the same cost that, you know, uh, an OEM would buy them at. Um, go find myself some software, a software operating system, put it on top, off I go, it should be cheaper. Um, the reality was that, that what happened in the industry is that um, the software that you could buy, the disaggregated software operating systems, uh, absorbed the savings that you got mm. from you know, a lower cost hardware, and so everything evened out, and, and actually, you know, quite frankly, the white box has not delivered on its promise. It has for the hyperscale vendors who are buying in massive, massive volume. Um, and uh, are building their own operating systems, you know, built for purpose. But in the broader industry, we, we haven't seen those advantages. And so what we did at SnapRoute is we took a big step back and we said, look, you know, if you really need software economics here, then, you know, as a software company, we need to step up. We well, need you're, to be You're the a software team. company and not a networking company. We're, we're a software company. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, we're delivering a network operating Got system, it. but we view it as a, it's an application. Sure. Um, and, you know, the architecture we've built is not a traditional monolithic Linux sort of, you know, blob, as it were. We've, we've really embraced the, the DevOps culture, the DevOps paradigm, We've embraced all the sort of you know the application and software developer paradigms of how you build a state of the art cloud class application today, and that's what we've done with the network operating system. We've taken that approach to deliver you know what is effectively a, a distributed application. So let, let's let's build on that a little bit because mm -hmm. the the as you said the the, the white box approach doesn't work that that well in the networking world, largely because some of these network operating systems companies were delivering these right. very large monolithic uh, 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 pieces of software right. that really were just layers on top of a network that often people didn't need yeah. and generated a significant amount of lock-in. So there was right. always questionable to begin with. Right. The approach that you're taking, using containers, modern software techniques, cloud-native approaches, mm. allows, it seems to me, two benefits. Let me see if I got this right. Yeah, sure. Benefit number one is it looks like a set of programmable services yep. to the dev DevOps world, which is good. Yep. And number two, because it doesn't have this monolithic footprint, you can appropriately skinny it up so that it now does make sense right. to think in terms of a new economic model. Yeah. Because you can get access to the services you want, you don't have the security, you, you, you don't have the uh, uh, the footprint associated with, you know, yeah. Talk yeah. about that. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's. If you look at it architecturally, and, and you're spot on. But if you look at it architecturally, and 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 let's let's for a moment empathise with the NetOps teams, um, because you know their job has been to um, take something, take a you know a, a network using tools and and products um, that the industry have given them. And, and try to live in a very dynamic world, the cloud world, you know, the, the new class of enterprise. But what they've been given are, is a set of tools and a set of products that only enable them to build a very static and very brittle distributed sort of system, distributed network. 
Um, and you know, these are, they just haven't had the tools to work with. They were, they were largely separate from the services that were running on the network. Very much so. So you know, the, you know, NetOps has been siloed, and 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 you know, the, the you know the, the network is is more siloed. Um, our, you know, our founders came from Apple, where they ran sort of, you know Apple's biggest data centers. And you know, one of the things they tell me is that you know the 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 sort of peer sort of you know pressure and stuff was that if there was a, a security vulnerability that had to be patched or something that you know the the DevOps team would come in, uh, the the uh, the compute team would sort of say, yeah, okay, you know, we can patch that in, you know, a couple of hours, couple of days at, at worst. Um, and as the networking team, they would sit there in the, in the corner of the room, you know, very shy, sort of saying, well, it will take us several weeks to get back to you with a plan for a plan, and then we've got to wait for an outage window, and you know, we've got to, you know, and it could take months. Um, and and so you know NetOps uh, has had this really really difficult task of you know of, of of living in this dynamic world with everybody else, but you know the 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 issue here is that if you can deliver uh, the tools the you know the the set of tools um, and and that means a, a you know an operating system that is designed to be dynamic in the first place, then you should also not only be able to reduce the operational costs overall because now you enable you know NetOps teams to, to move faster and stuff, but you have to be able to deliver an economic value in terms of OPEX because otherwise there's no reason for anybody to move. It's uh, it's probably safer to stay where you are. It's it's probably you know you know change always comes with some kind of cost and some kind of risk. And by their very nature, NetOps teams have become risk averse because any time they changed anything, the network could break. So they you know they have had to start, you know, live in a world of no. Every time somebody comes to them and says, hey, I have an application, I need you to do this, that, and the other, the answer is no. Because I, I you know, I don't want to change anything. I'm measured on uptime. That is the, that is the you know, the, the, the standard measure that, that networking teams are measured by. And if I'm measured by uptime, then I don't want to change anything. Well, in the server world, we used to talk about how the, the cost of the change was yeah. underwritten by the improvements in price performance. Right. And in many respects, what you're saying is by taking a new approach, you are paying for the cost and risk of the change because you're jumping to a new economic model right. that pr fundamentally puts you on a different vector, not only for new economics, but also creates new yeah. classes of n options in the network that's much more cloud-like. Yes, exactly. I mean, it's, uh, it's you know, and, and this is, this is I believe, a fundamental of, of, you know, the sort of cloud thinking, cloud mentality, and the reason that, you know, we're all trying to get to cloud um, is exactly because it, it gives you, it gives you more flexibility at, you know, at lower cost. I mean, everybody, everybody's embracing the public cloud. Now, what we've seen is, you know, still you know some recent numbers are coming out of of Lyft that they've had to commit you know three hundred million dollars you know through twenty twenty one to you know their public cloud provider, um, and and those numbers are you know scary and terrifying for a lot of a lot of companies. So going all in on the public cloud maybe is not the right way to go. Um, but you know, living in a hybrid world where you have some on prem, you have some public cloud, um, and working out which model is best for your company. Um, is is the right way to go, and and the network has been an inhibitor to that because if you have to have a different on-prem network model than is being used in the cloud, in the public cloud, or as as you you know sort of use the virtual services there. Well, now you're adding a bunch of cost operationally because you have to do two different things and you have to figure all this out. And very importantly, you're losing a lot of the options that the cloud Absolutely. provides you. And the whole point is to get a better, uh, get a better uh, cost profile, to be able to m use new techniques and approaches right. to building applications, but also to be on a vector that provides new types of options in the future, so right. that you don't have to worry about this network having mm -hmm. these limits and that network having a different set of limits. And right. so it, it, it brings a more unified approach yep. to say, this is a common resource to the business that is these profiles, this yep. ca physical characteristics, these uh, software characteristics, and these economic characteristics. Exactly, yeah, I mean, it's the service book mentality. It's like, you know, hey, I, I, I want to have a, a set and a list of services that I, you know, subscribe to and I just pick and choose, or, you know, innovate new ones, uh, and, and that's been very difficult in the legacy networking world. Um, so yeah, we're, we're, the approach is to, you know, to come in with this, you know, this architectural change 
that it, that it enables the innovation, it enables that, you know, that service mentality, it enables, you know, it frees up the business to be more dynamic, to be more responsive and, you know, and agile. Um, but, but give the economic driver, do it at, at, in software economics that you know, allows you to kickstart that, allows you to gain the momentum within your organization to say, hey, we should try something new because you know, there, is, there is enough savings here and there are significant savings here. So to give you an idea, I mean, it, you know, what, what we deliver at the system level, so if you take you know, a white box, a, you know, an ODM box, and you take our software and put you know, two together, install one on the other, at the system level, we're about 50% the price of, of any of the legacy you know, incumbent vendors. So it's, it's half the price. Now, it, you know, previously in white box, what people have found is actually when they were trying to do stuff themselves, the price is pretty much the same, if not a little bit more expensive once you add in you know, the operational costs. So we're really actually giving the opportunity to make white box successful. Um, we're giving the opportunity to, you know, to, to deliver control and, you know, and, and the opportunity to innovate to, to operators. But most significantly, when you're going to talk to your CFO or your CIO or anybody else, you know, we're driving the price down so significantly that, you know. Well, I'm just doing a quick calculation in my head. 50% savings mm -hmm. on network in a sizable enterprise translates into about uh, about uh, two tenths of a margin point for the business. So yep. not bad. Yep. Dominic Wild, CEO of SnapRoute, thanks very much for talking to us on theCUBE today. Thanks, Peter. Thanks. And once again, I'm Peter Burris, and this has been another CUBE Conversation. Until next time. <laughs>